Hey, JD from Flux Focus. Today I'm doing uh, a repair or an attempt of a repair of an uh, IOTA switch mode power supply. Uh, so this will give out 13.4 um, volts DC when it's working uh, and at 55 amps um, it can take 108 to 190 volts DC and these are often used in uh, electric vehicles uh, where the, the voltage pack is, um, the traction pack uh, can be uh, anywhere between 90 and 140, 150 for, for a lot of electric vehicles uh, and this is out of one of those. <coughs> the first thing I'm going to have to do is uh, give it a bit of a clean. Uh, it's uh, a long story but it got sprayed with uh, either dry chemical or foam extinguisher so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, give it a bit of a clean. Okay that's uh, cleaned up uh, good enough now uh, so I'll start to have a look over some of the components and see what I can find. Uh, because it uh, at the moment it's taking DC in uh, I've got a uh, Variac variable AC um, unit here and I'll dial that up to um, the appropriate uh, voltage and I've got a, a bridge rectifier there uh, that can uh, rectify that to DC for this unit. Uh, so anyone who kn who's looked at a switch mode power supply before will know that that's pretty much useless uh, checking the fuses but I'm going to do that anyway. Yeah, fuse works. And uh, output fuses. And they're okay as well. Surprise, surprise! Okay, so I've got the Variac plugged into the rectifier and at the moment it's reading 2.3 volts DC and I'm going to uh, dial that up until we reach about... Uh, we'll go for uh, 120 at the moment, I think. Okay, we're now sitting at about 120 volts, and uh, the next thing I'll do is uh, plug that into the power supply and uh, see what comes out the other side. Uh, Variac and rectifier is now plugged into the power supply, and the voltmeter is connected to the output of the power supply. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so there wasn't much reaction there. Obviously there's something wrong. Uh, we'll have a bit of a closer look now with the power connected. I'm going to check uh, the DC capacitors. Um, the power supply was originally made for use with AC for countries with uh, 120 volts AC. I'm in Australia with 240 volts AC and uh, so that's why these devices can be, these power supplies can be used with uh, traction packs for electric vehicles uh, with 130, 140 volts DC. Uh, okay, so let's plug it in again. Now we'll just check our power. It's sitting at about 120, so we'll be expecting 118 to 120 uh, something volts on the capacitors. And the minus should be that one there. There's some enamel on the board. And there we go, 119, 120 volts. Okay, so it's getting through the rectifier and into the DC caps. Uh, so that's something. So I'm going to check the uh, PWM chip uh, that um, drives the coil. And uh, there's the there's the little sucker there, the switch mode PWM generator. Uh, so uh, the maximum volts that it'll take is about 30. It should be receiving about 15 volts as supply. Uh, the frequency uh, that's set up there on pin 4 with the RC circuit should be about 52 kilohertz and uh, we'll see if the output's doing anything and VREF uh, allegedly should be about 5 volts. I'm going to measure between pin 5 and pin 7. I haven't got it turned on just at the moment, uh, but coming off, coming off the capacitors is a hundred k. Looks like maybe a one watt resistor, 
that um, feeds some of these circuits and I'll turn it on and we'll measure the other side of that resistor just measuring measuring supply again hundred and twenty one volts I can take ground from that point there and if I measure that side of the 100k I'm getting 87-ish mm, millivolts and on this side of the resistor I'm measuring 120 so I suspect that either something's really wrong on this side of the circuit or this 100k is busted so we'll take that out of the circuit and, uh, and we'll check that and uh, just measuring that a moment ago let's see if I can get that in there. Measuring that a moment ago, that uh, resistor uh, seems to be open circuit, so I'm not sure what happened to it, but uh, let's uh, measure that again. And uh, no reaction. Uh, so, unfortunately, it's not the sort of resistor that I have. Uh, lying around. Of course I've got a hundred k's but uh, most of them are a quarter watt. This looks like uh, at least a half watt. I've now replaced that resistor with a hundred and twenty k uh, one watt and uh, now I'll plug it in and see what happens. We can take ground from there and we can check the other side of that resistor now which is uh, 16.9 volts and I was suggesting that it would probably be sitting around 15 volts. You can have a look at the supply of the PWM generator so between pin 5 and pin 7. and that's getting that 16.9 uh, volts and we should see on pin 8 about oops. so we've got 5 volts uh, reference off that pin and the output is on pin 6 so we'll have a look at that uh, pin 6 is here and that's showing 43.25 kilohertz. So that's uh, that's about uh, that's about right. Okay, I'm going to do one more test. The uh, resistor I've now replaced with uh, 100k one watt. It was a half watt before, but I couldn't find any half watts. And uh, so that's the resistor that was stopping uh, supply to some of these uh, devices, including the PWM generator. Okay, I've got a uh, I've got a load connected to the output now, and uh, that should be, uh, if we're lucky, about 150 watts. Okay, let's see what happens. And that seems to be working okay. Got some bright light up the back there, and we'll just check the voltage here. And we've got 12.12 volts. Okay, that's good. We'll turn it off fan connected now and it's screwed into the into the chassis uh, the board is screwed down onto the chassis all right so we'll connect that up and it's still working okay and survey says 12 volts i haven't tested the fan yet um there's a uh, thermistor down here that's uh, controlling whether the fan is on or not uh, depending on what the temperature is amongst a, uh, a set of resistors uh, so I'm going to try to trick it a little by uh, applying some heat to that area. Uh, not sure how long I'm go going to have to hold it there for. Of course being a butane torch all the butane wants to fall out. There we go. And that's the fan turning on cooling the unit down. I can turn the torch off. And the unit's cooled sufficiently. Heat it up just a bit again, just to test. And there we go, the fan's going again. All right, that's all good. That's what I wanted to know. I'll now put the lid back on and uh, send it back to my friend. Cheers.